We're going to look at how to use the textbook and uh, experiment inside NetBeans. So I just started up NetBeans here. You always want to go, when you're building something new, always go to New Project right here. You can also go File, New Project. You typically don't want to do New File, so I'm going to go New Project. You want to go Java with ANT, Java Application. Next, you do need to give it a name. Uh, the first time you run it, it's going to go a little slow. I'm just going to choose the download and activate. I know this is exciting for you to watch. Finish. Activating. Here we go. I don't know how this is going to be on Macintosh, but hopefully it's somewhat similar. All right, so this is the uh, typically what you'll see when you start a new project. Now, it's very important, the name. The name needs to exactly match the class name. So this one's hello with a capital H. So I'm going to go hello. And finish. It's going to give you a default Java file, and the file is hello.java. You're going to see that has the package is going to be lowercase hello. You're not going to see this package mentioned in the book. Uh, this is something that we need in NetBeans, and we're not going to really get into exactly what a package is. Uh, well, it's a grouping of files. It is going to be the first line in every uh, new Java file that you create. And Later on, we have multiple files. They all need to be in the same package. But for right now, it's just the same name as a class, but a lowercase uh, initial letter. So you see public class hello is already created. Right now, we don't need to worry about any of this grayed out stuff right here. The author should be your name. Put your full name in there. Uh, if this is a lab, you can type Java Lab 1 or whatever, I'll do Java Lab 0, but whatever Java Lab it is. And you can delete the upper comments too. This right here is just so when I grade, sometimes I download lots of labs at one time, and when I grade, then I can see whose lab is whose. You can also delete this comment, but it does give you a hint, your code goes there. So before I go and what I'm gonna do is basically copy and paste all the code on the left into here, I want to talk about what some of the syntax is. Statements and in a semicolon, there are, there's only one statement in this, in this entire program. Uh, so most lines end, every line is going to end with some type of punctuation. Semicolon ends a statement. You're going to see that this curly bracket right here matches the curly bracket on line 14 down here. So the one on line seven matches 14. And if I move the cursor with the keyboard, you can see there's another curly bracket on line 12 and it matches the one up on line 10 because I highlighted in yellow. If I go down two more, now I'm on the line 14 curly bracket matches the line seven curly bracket. You can run this program uh, you can also hit F6, or you can hit the green run button. It's up to you. I'm expecting nothing to happen, but you should see build successful. If you don't see build successful, we got a problem. Uh, so let's make this do something interesting. There's a couple other. So we got curly brackets. You also see parentheses. And this parenthesis starts here and ends right over here. You can see it highlighted in yellow. There's also square brackets. Now, you're only gonna see square brackets once until much later in the quarter. So they're gonna be, square brackets are gonna be very uncommon. Uh, so you're not gonna see them often at all. And it's and we're actually not gonna even use what I have highlighted. It needs to be there, but we won't actually use it. Uh, it's for command line arguments. Don't worry about that. We're not gonna be using them. So there's another set of curly brackets here. They do have to match. So what I'm gonna do is delete this curly bracket and put in a parenthesis. 
and immediately you see red. And you see right here, illegal start of expression, and this one is reach end of file while parsing. And what that means is illegal start of expression typically means the first non blank or the first non space on the line is illegal. It doesn't mean you're going to be arrested. It just means that it's not okay. Um, and if you try to change this to a parenthesis, uh, you'll also see a problem. So what's happening here is what's called a block and a block starts and ends with the curly bracket. And for now, just keep your code inside of the public static void main curly brackets. The extra white space doesn't matter, not for now. Uh, what I wanna do is take this public class hello, copy it, control C, and I'm gonna paste it into my file. Now I could just paste it right here uh, and Let's see, we're gonna have a problem because you see public class hello, public class hello, that's not okay. I'm gonna undo it. So what I'm gonna do instead is put it on top here. So now we have two public class hellos. You're only allowed to have one. So I'm gonna delete the one that was in here originally that didn't do anything. And you should have this uh, exist with no errors if you paste it exactly as I did. Uh, if you paste out of the PDF textbook, sometimes there's weird formatting that creeps in. I recommend use the HTML web interface textbook is usually much better for copying and pasting. Okay, we have uh, a program we can run and it should just say hello world. Everything above run uh, is not is just the compile part of your program. It's not really too important unless there's something wrong, then it is important. Uh, but when it compiles correctly, all we really care about is what it says after run. And I'm holding down alt and scrolling with the mouse wheel to make this bigger. All right, so that is how to, a little bit about syntax here. And there's another piece of punctuation. A statement is something that actually does something as opposed to line 10, which is a grouping. It says that this is in, uh, don't worry too much about public static void main yet, but it's a way to group statements together. This particular public static void main is executed whenever you hit the run button up here. Public class hello is a way to group together some methods or blocks of code. You can also collapse blocks. So I could collapse public static void main and it tells you it's four lines long right over here on the right side. Uh, it didn't delete it, it just compressed it down so you don't actually see the internal code right here. Uh, let's make this do something a little cooler. So I can do system, just copying what's above dot out dot, oh. now notice when you press the period key, uh, if you type things correctly, it tells you everything system.out can do. Uh, all we're gonna do right now is print. I'm gonna get crazy and use a print ln. So the first one did hello worlds, and then I'll just type the end. And let's go ahead and run this. When you run, it saves automatically. So it says, hello world, the end. And you should see build successful. If you don't see build successful at the end, it's probably stuck in a loop, which shouldn't be happening yet because uh, we haven't done loops. So these are two print statements. There's another print if you remove the LN. If you notice what came out, it's the same thing that came out except between the exclamation point and the T, there's not a new line so that they're all on the same line. Could put a space at the end, run it again. Hello world, space the end. Now if you want an actual new line, uh, we'll cover this very soon, but slash n is a new line. Uh, that's another way to get a new line here, but you can always use print ln if you want to.